All right, so here we are, we're in the shop. Uh, the Audi is coming apart. You can see it right back here. It's uh, front end's all off of it. We wanted to do the front end first and then tackle the back end. That way, you know, we, we see the problems and tackle them as they go and then hopefully have an idea for what to do when we get to the back end and hopefully make the back end go easier. But uh, as you can see, kind of not really. Um, we got the whole thing out. The whole hub and everything, you can see the hubs sitting over there. There's one there and the other one's right here. Unfortunately, this one has got a bad wheel bearing in it. And it's gonna be kind of tough to see, but uh, it's got some wiggle in that hub. So it's got a bad bearing in it. Um, unfortunately, uh, those aren't easy to come by in Helena, Montana, so I'm going to have to order one and unfortunately tear this whole thing apart on one corner again in order to get that bearing off of it. But other than that, it's uh, moving along pretty nicely. We're going to have to uh, zip off these bolts right here. There's four of them. There's one back there. If I can get the lighting right. Uh, yeah, and that will let this whole subframe unit drop out. And then we'll drop that out, we replace these bushings right here. We're replacing the transmission mounts right here. And then you can see up in there that thing with the bolts on it are the motor mounts. And there's one tucked way up in there on the other side. But that's the plan as of right now. Hopefully the front end will be back together here in the next few hours and then we'll uh, tear apart the rear end. Oh, well. The first night of work is finished up. Um, unfortunately, we didn't make it as far as we planned to. Uh, the front end still isn't on the car. We just ran into some bumps. The the bushings in the front subframe did not come out like they were supposed to. They didn't uh, they didn't press out. Um, so we had to burn them out, which takes a lot more time and uh, is a very messy process. So we took a lot of time there. Um, unfortunately, the studs for one of the motor mounts, uh, the studs actually stripped in their settings and so they were just spinning and the nuts were just spinning. Um, and so we ended up having to cut the nuts and the bolts off. And I mean, this is this is kind of the kind of stuff you have to deal with when you're working with a, oh, let's see, it's an 84. So a 34 year old car. Um, you know, it's the nature of the beast. We're moving with it. We're going to get it done. Uh, but the front end, as of right now, is ready to go put back together. We just, you know, we ran out of time tonight. Um, so hopefully tomorrow we can zip the front end back together real quick. And uh, now that we know most of it, we can take care of the rear end. Um, and the rear end is a little bit simpler than the front is. And so we don't have to worry about some things. I don't have to replace CV axles or anything like that, um, like I did today. And of course, you know, you get started and there's things that you need that you don't have that you weren't aware you needed when you started. For instance, the, the CV axles on this car use a special type of bit uh, that I had to go to a couple of parts stores to track down. But, you know, I eventually found it. But of course, that wasted time that I could have been spending working on other things on this car. So, you know, it's what it is. We're moving along. And... Uh, as long as we are able to uh, buckle down and, and uh, really get on it tomorrow, we should be able to finish up without a whole lot of problem, especially uh, since the front end took way longer because we had to replace the tranny mounts and uh, the transmission mounts, as well as deal with the steering and some other things with it. So the rear end will go a little bit quicker, and uh, hopefully it'll all be done tonight or uh, done tomorrow night. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, I mean, the more and more I do this, just the more and more excited I am to drive it. Um, but it's got to get done tomorrow night because Monday morning uh, it is scheduled to get an alignment. Um, and I also need to go home Monday. So, yeah. So it needs to be driving one way or another. Um, but, yeah, it should all go back together. It's really nice to get under the car and actually look at some of these things. You know, I've been on it underneath it uh, before at my house in Bozeman. But it's just, it's not the same as having it up on the lift and being able to walk around and see it. I'm so happy that 
Uh, I'm here doing it because there is no way in hell that this was going to be a weekend project. If I had to do this on my back underneath jack stands, uh, it just would have made it way tougher. And uh, thankfully, I have a lift available to me, and you know we're making it happen. But I'll bring you guys another update tomorrow night, um, along with a few more pictures as it comes along. But uh, fingers crossed. It is together tomorrow evening, and that way I can go drop it off the alignment shop and they can get it taken care of first thing Monday morning. Um, as far as things that I'm going to I'm gonna have to replace later that I've already found, um, that one wheel bearing, the front passenger or front driver's side wheel bearing is bad. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's an old Audi and they're not very common, and so I called around to the parts stores here in town and... And everywhere I talk to is about a five-day wait to get a hold of one, which, of course, I can't do. So, you know, I'll order one when I get back to Bozeman, and I'll get it. And then uh, at some point, I'll be able to bring the car back, and I can put it back up so I can uh, so I can replace that wheel bearing. Um, along with that, uh, I did not pay attention in my ordering of parts, and I forgot to order new bushings for the rear subframe. Um, so, you know, that's all going to have to come out, uh, again later. The only nice thing is, is, is we can skip some steps. It doesn't have to be disassembled quite as far, um, as we're going to have to right now, but it'll still be a big project. But thankfully, um, between the wheel bearing and the rear end, it should be another, a day or two project to get both of those done. Um, as far as anything else, I think everything else is rolling along, uh, pretty smoothly. The, the new motor mounts are in, the new transmission mounts are in. We're going to replace the diff mounts, um, along with the suspension on the rear end. Now we got the, we got the suspension components ready to go. Um, but yeah, it's exciting and, uh, I'll update you guys tomorrow. Oh man, well all right, it is, uh, it's Monday morning, I am currently about to leave for Bozeman. Bad news is the Audi is not coming with me. The Audi is actually going to stay here for the next couple of weeks. We, uh, we hit some, some road bumps, speed bumps, we hit some bumps that we didn't plan on. Um, such as, I didn't realize the front of this car was going to be such a learning experience. Um, don't get me wrong, there is more work required on the front, so the back will take less time, and I also know how to do it all now, but, um, you know, there were some things, some very Audi things done on this car that, um, you know, it just took some time, you had to figure out how to fix them, and your own way to do them without Audi's specialty tools, so the front ended up taking up a lot more time than I had planned, along with, um, uh, I ordered the wrong part on accident, so I was planning on replacing that driver's side CV axle, and I got a CV axle. And unfortunately, uh, I bought the passenger side CV axle and not the driver's side. And there's about a two-inch difference in length between the two of them. Uh, so they just don't work. And so I couldn't have even put that front one back on if I wanted to. And that old one was so trashed anyways. I'm amazed it hadn't blown up on me because it is so hard. You take it out and, and the spindle side of it is so hard to turn uh, and rotate. So I really didn't have a way to put that back into the car and you know you can't drive it with only one in the front. You can't drive it missing one CV axle. Uh, so that and then I also you know there were some more parts you know that you always find that you need. Uh, I got a couple more bushings I'm gonna have to order and uh, some more ball joints. I'm gonna replace the lower. I, I initially was just replacing the upper ball joints uh, the tie rod ends, uh, but now I'm going to replace the lower ball joints too, the ones that are in the control arms on the front and the back, and then I also can get a couple more bushings and stuff like that. So, I mean, just, you know, it's what happens when you, when you tear apart into a project like this, and I was hoping three days was going to be enough time to take care of this project, and as it turns out, it wasn't, and, and, uh, even if I had been, uh, a little bit more on top of the, the maintenance, or, uh, the labor on this thing, I still would have been SOL on that CV axle and a couple other parts that I didn't have that I really shouldn't replace or that I really should replace while I'm in here, such as the driver's side needs a new wheel bearing too. And I'm sure the CV axle contributed to that problem because there's a lot of play in that wheel bearing. So, you know, if I, if even if I had finished this project this weekend, I mean, that means I would have had to tear, torn it all apart to replace that wheel bearing anyways, along with the CV axle, if I just left that old CV axle in there. And so it's currently just, it's going to stay on jack stands here in Helena. 
um, until I uh, until I think two weekends from now. I gotta go and I gotta place a couple of orders from some parts, um, and then I'll be back in a couple of weeks, hopefully to finish it up. I mean, it's been a really fun project so far. I mean, I won't I won't say that it's you know I regret getting into it uh, at all. It's it's a fun project and. You know, there are some really cool things on this car, along with the pain in the ass things that Audi did. Um, for instance, with a 17 millimeter wrench and socket, you can take apart 90% of the suspension. I mean, everything in there has a 17 millimeter head or nut on it, um, which makes it really nice, you know? You're really consistent with the tools you're using and it saves you time trying to use different duals from everything. Um, one thing I've noticed when working on cars is uh, different like uh, origins for companies, like different uh, countries that they're from, really dictate the sizes they use. Now you'd think, oh, you know, Europe and Japan have been on the metric system, you know, for the longest time. You'd think, that their metric systems would be similar. Don't get me wrong; they're the same. They're the same metric system, but their their regular usage of bolts and nuts is completely different. For instance, um, most of my uh, experience is on Japanese cars, so like Subarus and Hondas and stuff like that. And um, those cars run entirely on 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 14 millimeter bolts and nuts. Uh, and with those three wrenches, you can take apart a lot of Japanese cars. Um, However, messing with Audi, a German car, which is also entirely done in metric uh, sizes, they tend to focus more on 13 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 17 millimeter sizes. And so, you know, it's just, it's a kind of a weird difference between the two. And then if you jump to American cars, because anymore, pretty much all American cars are running metric um, hardware in them too. But you'll notice, uh, the American ones use what seems to be extremely random sizes. You know, you'll find 15 millimeters and random, you know, just random sizes in there. But what they're doing is they're getting the millimeter sizes that work with American standard sizes. For instance, uh, a half, or uh, let's see, 9 sixteenths and a, uh, what is it, a 15 millimeter? Anyways, I could be wrong on that. They're using pretty much interchangeable sizes to where either a metric or an uh, American standard size socket will work on them. I don't have the conversions down very well. But whereas most American cars for the longest time ran off of 7 16ths, half inch, 9 16ths, and 5 eighths, they just use the closest metric equivalents that allow you to use those same, because the American sizes are still close enough that you can use them to take off bolts and nuts and stuff like that. Um, so it's just kind of funny between American cars, German cars, and Japanese cars, they all use the metric system anymore, but none of them use the same sizes. They, they each have their own consistent sizes they use for their things. But, um, but for instance, to, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about Audi was the consistent sizes and the heavily, the heavy use of 17 millimeters on almost everything underneath this car. Made that really nice. Um, not so nice things is uh, to get the nut off of the bolt for the control arm, you have to reach up in a little tiny hole with a wrench that barely fits. You gotta like do it, at, you just have to move it around at weird angles until you finally get the wrench to fit into the hole. And then the bolt, so the hole sits here, but the, the nuts way back here away from the hole. So you have to angle the box, the open end of a wrench into that hole and barely hold on to that nut while you're trying to get the bolt out of the other side. Um, you know, it's things like that. I, I firmly believe that uh, every vehicle designer, you know, they, they all need to be required to take apart their own cars. And not like, don't be wrong, you can take apart everything, you know, for the most part, make it easier in some way, shape, or form if you take off extra stuff to make it happen. For instance, if I would have removed the exhaust to do this job, it would have been easier for quite a few things. Um, but obviously, I didn't want to do that because, number one, the exhaust hasn't been changed in the 34 years this car has been around, which means all of those bolts are probably going to break. I doubt I can pull a single bolt between the header and the final um, exhaust pipe that won't break if I try to undo it. So it's just things like that that I'm not, I'm gonna do everything I can not to avoid, or 
I'm gonna do everything I can to avoid taking off the exhaust. But I, yeah, every vehicle designer and people who design these um, should be required to take them apart and put them back together um, just so they realize how ridiculous some of the stuff they designed work because not everything that works on paper works in real life. Um, but yeah, that's my rant. My rant is over. Um, I'm excited to get back here and finish it up. Hopefully, like I said, now that I've taken apart the front, I know how it goes together and the back's almost the exact same. The only difference is, is I don't have to worry about engine mounts in the back and I don't have to worry about steering. I still have tie rod ends, but they're a little bit easier to deal with since, you know, it's not, you don't have to shift them side to side to get them to work. Um, but the back goes together pretty much the exact same way. I don't have to worry about going, I don't have to worry about a CV axle. So it should be good. I'm excited for it and, um, and it should actually go together the next time and fingers crossed I'll be driving it home the next time. Um, haven't decided what I'm gonna do with Stella yet. I, uh, I mean, obviously she's getting fixed here at some point. It's just whether or not I wanna be the one to do it. Obviously I wanna do it, it saves me money and I like working on my own vehicles. Unfortunately, neither one of my vehicles is drivable at the moment. I have the Audi sitting on jack stands minus a front end. Uh, and the Subaru is sitting in Bozeman with a bad clutch, with a bad throwout bearing, which means the clutch is essentially bad because you can't use it anyways. Um, so both my vehicles are undrivable. Um, the Audi's already started. I had already taken the time off of work and everything to tackle this Audi project. So the Audi was the one that came home and unfortunately it didn't come together and I'm not driving it back. So that means both of my cars are out of commission. Uh, if I'm lucky, uh, two weekends from now when I come back to finish the Audi, it actually gets finished and I will be able to take it home. Uh, problem is, is if I'm going to do the Subaru myself, that means I'm looking at three weeks to a month before I'm able to tackle the Subaru. So it's kind of like, do I want to wait that long to have Stella back or do I want to break down and pay the $500 to have somebody replace my clutch? I have all the parts for the clutch, which is the one nice thing is because I was going to replace it a while ago and then I realized it really wasn't worth the hassle since the clutch wasn't all the way out yet. Um, and so I, you know, I, uh, I made the choice to drive it until the clutch actually went out and would replace it then. Um, unfortunately, it, uh, it just, the timing was terrible and it coincided with the Audi. Uh, but we will, we'll make it happen one way or another. I'll let you guys know what happens with Stella. But, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. The Audi's, the Audi's going to get finished here in a couple of weeks and hopefully Stella soon after. But, uh, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, if you guys feel the need, please like, subscribe and share the video, um, video all you want. Um, and one thing I feel the need to show you guys is, and don't get me wrong, it's very sacrilegious, but this. See, I have an extra STI spoiler laying around that I was eventually going to put on Stella. It doesn't have the correct uh, mounting hardware in it right now that I have to put in in order to make it mountable, um, so it's just been sitting around the garage. Now, I know what you're saying. Why would you put an STI spoiler on an Audi? Don't get me wrong, it's not on there. It's just sitting there. But it upsets me that it fits so well and whether or not you like it, it doesn't look that bad, at least not in my mind. I mean, you know, it's just, it's upsetting how well it fits with the car, um, you know? So maybe, maybe if I get bored enough one day and I find an easy way to mount this, the Audi might be running around with an STI spoiler for a while, just because, you know, why not? You know, it might upset some people who really love STIs and it might upset people that really love Audis. Um, and either way, it's a win-win, um, and you definitely have a car that stands out. The car already stands out as it is, since it's weird and you don't see them ever, but I feel like a nice wing would just be good to top it off. But, uh, but that's the Audi, that's the updates on all the projects, and, uh, I'll let you guys know what happens this week. Until then, uh, have a good one.